Chair, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and to insert extraneous material on H.R. 288. Without objection. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I rise in strong support of H.R. 288, Separation of Powers Restoration Act, or SOPRA. The Constitution separates the powers of the federal government into a system of checks and balances. Article 1, Section 1 grants Congress all legislative power, while executive powers granted to the president and judicial power is vested in the courts, as we all know. However, since 1984, when the Supreme Court ruled that courts must defer to an agency's interpretation of an ambiguous statute, rather than what Congress intended, the executive branch has begun usurping the legislative branch to issue regulations with the force of law. This consolidation of power departs from the constitutional principles and harms our own liberties. It is certainly not what our founders intended. Yet this 1984 ruling known as Chevron has paved the way for unelected bureaucrats to issue sweeping rules with no consequences. Just in 2021, for example, executive branch agencies issued more than 3,200 rules that imposed vaccine mandates on workers. They were also involved in overturning the Keystone Pipeline and required a $15 minimum wage for federal contractors and allowed the IRS to spy on Americans and their bank accounts. Meanwhile, that same year, only 143 bills passed by Congress were signed into law. This means executive branch agencies impose more than 20 times as many mandates as actual legislators. And these regulations are not without cost. According to the American Action Forum, federal agencies collectively finalized $200 billion in regulatory costs in 2021, equivalent to more than $600 per U.S. household. In 2022, we saw an additional $117 billion in regulatory costs added to the bottom line. Taken with rules from previous administrations and according to the Competitive Enterprise Institute, the total annual cost of regulation is almost $2 trillion, or about 8% of the U.S. GDP. If we're a country, for comparison, U.S. regulation would be the world's eighth largest economy, only behind France. If members of this chamber impose that kind of cost on taxpayers, well, we know what would happen. We'd all be voted out of office. Yet the Biden administration continues to issue binding rules and courts continue to apply the Chevron doctrine when determining its statutory authority. It's no surprise to see that the president will probably oppose this legislation and promise to veto it. Just five months into 2023, and we've already seen his administration circumvent Congress to make changes to non-competes, require climate disclosures by the Department of Defense contractors, and ban the use of pistol braces nationwide. An unchecked administrative state is dangerous to the American people. This is why it's imperative that Congress regain its legislative power by passing H.R. 288. The Separation of Powers Restoration Act would displace Chevron and other precedents that require courts to defer to agency positions. It ensures that courts independently consider what Congress has said through its statutes rather than putting a thumb on the scale in favor of the federal agencies. By forcing courts to apply de novo review, this standard would reclaim the court's constitutional role as the branch that interprets the law. And Congress's role will once again be underscored as the branch that writes them. Agencies are not supposed to make laws, and it is past time to bring the power of legislating back to the branch our founders intended. I want to thank Chairman Jordan for his leadership on the issue, and I urge my colleagues to support the bill, and I reserve the balance of my time.